Hey everybody, hello and good afternoon. Greetings from Clayton, Montgomery, Ohio. Wow, look at that beautiful truck. Holy smokies. Alright, the local time here is 428. Today, once again, is Saturday, January 6th, 2018. Local time is 428. Temperature is at 9 degrees, according to Baby Blue. Me and Baby Blue are going to make a little bit of a detour. Got a little stop. Baby Blue and I have a mission to do. We're going to stop at the uh, Micro Center in Columbus, Ohio. What we're going to stop in there is and see if they have an AVI out connection. AVI to HDMI. That way I could somehow maybe possibly quite literally connect my Rand McNally 730 and then incorporate that into my videos. That way I won't have to buy that uh, Overdrive 8 Plus uh, Pro. You see, there's so many junk stuff features on an overdrive that I just really don't need for one and foremost is the Sears uh, HF FM boy Sirius satellite stereo I don't need that and I certainly don't need the uh, ELD on the overdrive. I don't use that either. What else? As far as oh, one of the things that I could use is the updated traffic. But from what I understand, that's like what fifteen to twenty-nine dollars a month subscription it's a, it's a very expensive that's I don't know over a hundred dollars a year that adds up why do that I only I own already have Google map on my iPhone Really, the, the only reason, as I mentioned before, what I would really like that Overdrive 8 Pro is the HDMI out feature on it. That's, that's really about the only thing that really entices me to get it. And of course, it's a newer unit, updated. And, well, better screen, but those are not deal breakers. There's really nothing wrong with the Rand McNally 730 that I have right now. It still works as long as you keep it plugged in. So if I could somehow get the AVI to HDMI connection and I think that would really solve my dilemma. Alright, one of you asked which is better, uh, the 
Google map or satellite or the uh, GPS map well it, it all depends on where you're gonna be driving it what kind of vehicle you're gonna be driving on if you're gonna drive a car all right, this way. If you're gonna be driving a car and you need a GPS, I can't justify somebody buying a GPS to use in a car. For one thing, Google Map is always minute to minute updated. It's always updated. As where to, if you buy a Garmin or Rand McNally, you always constantly have to update it every couple days, couple weeks, you know. But here again, it, it really it all depends on the type of vehicle you're going to be driving it, where. There is the charge for the Google map. It's just a free app download. You know that satellite view, uh, Google map that you guys been watching my videos with? That's just an app out of my phone, out of my iPhone. It's not something that I subscribe to or pay extra. And I, I've heard that uh, as far as Trucker's GPS app, uh, I heard there are a few out there that are really good ones that you could app or tablet. Gosh, I went to, uh, I went to the Petro today over there in Remington and look at their GPS. Rand McNally has this unit that was six hundred and ninety nine dollars. I mean, man, that's that's a thousand dollars right there. A thousand dollars of all of a thing that only does one thing. And that's another point, is if I was going to spend $599 on a Overdrive 8 plus the $29 or however much, how much ever that monthly subscription is for updated traffic, whatever, I might as well get me a uh, an iPad with unlimited data Sprint by the way for those of you who may not know Sprint is offering an unlimited data of their uh, their tablets So I don't know I just really don't know why I would And yes, if I was to get a tablet, I would definitely get the iPad because then I can use that to incorporate into my videos. And you can do so much more with the iPad than what you can do with the Rand McNally GPS for about the same price. One of the things that I have been discovering is I'm using my phone to upload my videos and also using it for you know, Google Maps and everything. And, uh, it, 
sometimes you can't do one thing or the other. One thing because you're using it for a different purpose. So I'd like to get a separate unit. So then the question remains, should I get an iPad or another iPhone solely for that purpose? By the way, you, by now you have seen Chris Barr's uh, introduction video. I would ask you guys to send me a video of you uh, similar to it. Uh, about 30 seconds long should be sufficient. Either record the video and then um, record the video and send it on the Facebook Messenger then I can copy it from there or if you have a YouTube channel which I'm sure you do because you're watching it right well another way is that you can record your own video post it on your channel I can copy it right there from your YouTube channel basically put it in the internet and I'll get it to so send me the link kind of like an introduction video of how you find how you found JBG travels and what do you like about it? All that good stuff. Again, thank you for those of you who have been working diligently to forwarding my videos. Uh, like, share, comment, subscribe. It seems like I'm gaining a lot of subscribers every day. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a thousand subs a, a month. To me, that is that is incredible. That is, man, that is so beautiful. So you guys are doing it right. Thank you, thank you very much. All right, research question. See that uh, oversized truck there is on the middle lane. Uh, we've always heard you're not supposed to pass on the right lane, right? What would you do if you were me? Would you do exactly what I done? Or would you pass him on the, on the right side or on the left? the driver's side his driver's side uh boy one of you addressed that uh, I should put the on the windshield the one that you're looking at right now I should put it lower because it blocks the cab view. I don't have any intentions of leaving the cab view. In fact, I was really planning to put the camera way on top of the cab, way up there between the trailer and the cab. 
it was suggested to me by one of you that I should put it way on top that way it would look so cool going down the road like hey ma I'm on top of the world <laughs> And it, it would freak out a lot of people every time an overpass came by, like, just like this one right here. So just imagine if that camera was way on top, it'd be kind of freaky. sun is right behind me. Alright, we're only 64 miles. to uh, Micro Center in Columbus, Ohio. Okay, here's the first one. It's from uh, Matt Oskverik, uh, Facebook guy. Uh, he says, okay, here is my shot. This is the theological question. Does God desire all people to be saved? The question is not about anything but desire concerning all humans. He says, I'm not asking about being predestined, election. Uh, I understand John Owen's teaching and the smart seminary types. I'm wondering, though, about all people. Does God really want all people to be saved? Not God's sovereign decree and determination, but does he really want everyone to be saved? And his question is out of 1 Timothy 2, 3, and 4. Uh, <clears throat> this is good. Pleases God our Savior who wants all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. A classic Calvinistic question. God sovereignly decrees salvation. Does he really want everyone to be saved? What would you say? Well, when we talk about God's want to, Excuse me for being a theologian here for a second, but you said it was a theological yeah. question. We're looking at the, the biblical concept of the will of God, and if you look at it, there are two different Greek words that are translated by the English word will, thelo, thelo, my, for example. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and yet, if you examine those words etymologically, you'll see that they're very nuanced. There may be seven or eight distinct ways in which the Bible speaks of the will of God. Yeah. One of which is his sovereign will that you've mentioned. Another will is preceptive will, his law that he gives us. But there's also what we would call his, his, his uh, will of disposition. That is what pleases him. And uh, when the Bible says that God is not willing, for example, uh, or it takes no delight in the death of the wicked, it tells us something, I think, about the, the character of God that even though he's committed to justice, even though he's committed to judgment, he doesn't get his jollies by subjecting people to punishment. Mm -hmm. uh, like a, uh, 
a sadistic tyrant would. And I think that's the vein in which the Bible says he takes no delight in the death of the wicked. God doesn't, doesn't enjoy, in a certain sense, sending people to hell. But he doesn't. But there's grief. There's, but yeah, but if we're going to attribute human emotions to God, yeah. that would be a wonder. I think about a judge who's sitting on the bench, and up be, before him comes his son. And his son is guilty, and the law requires that he be sent to prison. And the judge is supposed to do what is right, and he does what is right. He sends, a, sends that boy to prison, but he does it in tears. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's what it's t- telling us about the, the character of God. You know, that his that his disposition is one of loving kindness, but that loving kindness does not annul his concern for righteousness or for justice. It's a great answer. I hope it helps.